<laughs> I want to keep this light and fun, but it's just, oh, I want you to make that connection eventually. It'll, it, yeah. it'll make it a little easier. It'll be like, eh, maybe I'll do four days vegan this week. <laughs> You're right. Uh, so I challenged my friend Brandon to challenge 22, 22 day vegan challenge. So I did a few videos on this already. I did a, a Zoom interview where we were talking to him about what his expectations were. I wrestled probably about like a month and a half ago before we got, you know, the second shutdown before I started this other job. And during the match, I got a knee injury. Could things be better with this leg if I actually was one on a plant-based diet? And then I actually surprised him and I went to his house with groceries. I mean, he was like, what? He, he wasn't actually like that. And then we got him his first vegan Chipotle ever. And we sat in like a cold mall area <laughs> and uh, he smashed it. I was trying to show him some vegan options he could get on his own while he's at Kroger. And it was a pretty good success. We got one update during his journey where he gave his roommate Aaron some Asian noodles that he was making. He was like, yeah, it's 100% vegan. Dude, what? That didn't happen either. I know you got your doubts. Everything in there is vegan. That's good. <laughs> yeah, super good, huh? I wanted to kind of get a final thoughts type of video. And so I invited him here for a Zoom conversation. A little background on Brandon is he's a professional wrestler. <laughs> Sustained an injury. He also cooks professionally. He started a true crime podcast called Into the Deep, which is pretty awesome. So if you like true crime, you'll be able to find that information in the description below. Let's call Brandon. Hello. I'll be like, hey, Brandon, what's up? Who's up, babe? So, uh, everyone watching, this is Brandon Cabell. Yep. <laughs> Not to be confused with Cable. He hates when I say Cable. I, but, I can't uh, stand it. Or Cavill. Like, <laughs> It's obviously Cabell, C-A-B-E-L-L. -L. So you did Challenge 22. Absolutely. You went vegan for 22 days and you signed yeah. up on Challenge 22 and they have like mentors and stuff like that. Did you use any of their uh, resources? No, because you were my own built-in mentor. So I yeah. didn't feel like I needed any of the uh, stuff. It, it's cool to kind of like see how much you're saving, like how many trees and water and all that stuff. Yeah. Uh, so that's basically what you use it for. So. That's pretty cool. You sent one update. I put it on uh, shorts and you did like an Asian noodle dish and actually let your uh, roommate Aaron try it too. And he was pretty wowed by it. Were there any yeah. other foods in there that you uh, really enjoyed that really stood out? Well, of course, like, you know, the barbecue lentil sandwich that uh, you made so famous. Um, I really enjoyed that. I uh, made a couple of those. Those were awesome. Um, and then, you know, just finding different ways to make, because I love cheeseburgers, okay? I just uh, yeah. love them. So then finding an alternative way to make cheeseburgers um, was very cool. You know, like big portobello mushrooms and finding different stuff to like, you know, stuff them with and just make them interesting and flavorful. Um, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, that can be tricky too. That's that's been a process. That's taken me years to figure out because mm -hmm. getting the texture right where it's not like mushy and stuff is tricky, yeah. especially when you're getting into like lentils and stuff. Mm -hmm. But one little tip I'll just throw out there for anyone watching is uh, if you dehydrate some of your lentils after you cook them and then incorporate that back into the mix, they will start to rehydrate. But within that first like day or so, you'll get a nice contrast of texture where uh, well, that's very cool yeah so i wouldn't make the mix and like hold it for a couple of days i would just make it for however much you're eating that day but having that little dehydration in there and even um other kind of like rough root vegetables if you add that you know parsnips, mm -hmm. carrots things like that then they tend to hold up real well in there and get a little bit of cheese. that's awesome um yeah and i noticed that i mean honestly mushrooms was a pretty decent alternative to a burger you know what i mean like oh yeah you can marinate it. You can saute it like it's a burger. Pretty much everything. So yeah, it's pretty, pretty that, alternative. 
that real deep kind of earthy flavor too. So from like the health aspect, I know your knee was hurting and stuff like that. And we already recorded this whole video once and then I screwed it up, but, uh, it's all good. <laughs> uh, so tell everybody about like what happened to your body, like how, what you were feeling after the first couple of days. After a few days of being completely vegan, like I could tell the difference in my knee. My right knees was, knee was compromised. Um, Ryan already mentioned it, but I'm a professional wrestler. Um, I was wrestling in a match in October. My knee got hyperextended and I got injured. This is absolutely the worst injury that I've ever sustained ever throughout my whole wrestling career. And I've been wrestling for 13 years going on. It was giving me absolute problems. I couldn't walk up the steps. couldn't do anything without my knee feeling compromised or feeling weak. So after I started the 22 day challenge, I could tell that there was a lot of difference in my knee. Like it was less sore. I was able to move around a lot better. Um, I, it wasn't as swollen, all that stuff, like all the inflammation, all that stuff was, was basically subsided. And then, you know, once I did get through the challenge 22 and then I started picking up a little bit more meat again, I could definitely tell that uh, the inflammation and everything was starting to come back to it. When I was completely vegan, it was awesome. Money felt great. Yeah. So, I mean, that's no surprise to me. I knew it's just it, the same with me, the same with Katie. When Katie went vegan, like her inflammation just like went out. And um, so that leads me to the next question. It seems like you're not, you're not going to like stay a hundred percent vegan or plant-based. What's your plan with that? You want to incorporate more? I 100% would. Um, I I know that it's just a mental thing. And I know that, you know, you need to be stronger than your mentality sometimes. But there's, I just love meat. <laughs> like, I'm sorry, I love it. Um, and, and I think it's just because, you know, that's just what I grew up on. I'm accustomed to it. So that's just what I'm familiar with. That's what my body is familiar with. Absolutely. I do want to start implementing more days of me going completely vegan so i want to start with like one or two days a week of me doing a completely vegan day or two just completely doing that and then slowly i want to evolve that until my whole entire diet is just me being completely vegan yeah so i i do see value in it i definitely want to become vegan because i, I haven't felt any better you know what i'm saying since when i was like vegan like it was awesome i had more energy i body felt good so i think slowly transitioning and giving my body time to adjust will be the smartest thing for me to do little insider tip about me was i was also raised on meat i ate a lot of meat and a lot of dairy like dairy (laughs) tons of dairy and Mm -hmm. uh, i was still able to do it so if that gives you any shred of hope the thing is and it is mental i had a big kind of like realization that put me in that position where I was like, you know, I'm, I got it. It was actually kind of like the birth of my son um, made me start to think about like what types of foods would uh, be best for him and what foods would be like a detriment to him and dairy and meat. Just, it's just not good for you over time. And obviously, I mean, look at how like addicted you are to it. And I was too. Right. And right you know what it's doing to your body. So like just those two facts, the biggest thing, the biggest thing I want to say is that is an animal and it is a sentient being and it wants to live. And those animals, they're, they're no different than a dog or a cat. You know, we, society puts this barrier up that makes it and that they put all this money into marketing and like feeding you this narrative But once you make that connection, once you actually like in your heart, make that connection that you're eating an animal and that you wouldn't want to like actually kill it yourself. That's, that's the point that like pretty much nobody will ever go back. Right. Any, any vegans that are like firmly into it, there are some like wishy-washy vegans and they're doing it for different reasons. If you're doing it for health, if you're doing it just for the environment and stuff like that, then it's not as strong. But once you realize that you're like, you have to take a life and you put yourself, you empathize and you put yourself in the position of that pig, of that cow, that's what changes people. You know, at yeah. first I was doing it for health. And then, you know, once I made that connection, it's like, well, I could never go back. I'm, I think I mentioned this, this, talking like Mike Tyson. I think that I mentioned this before, 
um, Merry Christmas. When we <laughs> when we had our uh, conversation, um, but one of the things that made me really interested in doing this is Game Changers the documentary because you know it is a lot based on athletes and you know what they do to like <clears throat> what vegan athletes do to like maintain themselves and you know how they feel. So that was a huge thing for me too. And then another uh, documentary that was really big for me too was um, Blackfish. Like just seeing what those whales go through, um, seeing the kids being taken away from their, you know, moms and stuff so early. And then the moms like being in one of the fish tanks at SeaWorld, just crying for the babies. Like, yeah, dude, like horrible. Well, here's the thing. So you feel the empathy towards a killer whale, right? Which nine times out of 10, there's a good chance that a lot of people won't ever run into one of them in the wild. You won't yeah. just see a killer whale. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, unless then, you're like going up. I mean, I've seen like dolphins and stuff. I've, I've never seen a killer whale outside of, you know, an aquarium. Um, exactly. Setting right. type. Like, right. But if you feel empathy, you, here's the thing for you, you personally, if you feel empathy for a killer whale, now look at a pig or a cow that are like way closer to what a human is like mammals exactly you know exactly and all you have to do is drive down the road and you can see them you yeah know what I mean? and then you like think about them. what they go through when they're being brought to the slaughterhouse because like you could be grass-fed organic whatever they still have to be slaughtered and to get the types of volumes that you see for you know different stores and stuff like that you pretty much have to ship them all to a slaughterhouse and it's not like they have separated slaughterhouse they're, they're all going to the same killing floor and that's what it's called right. killing floor and right. it's like right mm. right and there i've seen stories of like retired dairy cows they're they're at the end of their five years of producing milk so they could live to 25 <laughs> years but they're at their, the end the five years of producing milk so they send them to the slaughterhouse and like this isn't just a one-time occurrence where they were actually still pregnant and so they kill the mother and then the baby is like squirming inside so then they have to cut out the baby and kill the baby on the killing floor Can you imagine hey, that no that's, your, that's your life you come into no. existence and you're taking in everything and then all of a sudden you're knifed no thanks <laughs> right absolutely no thanks and that's just it's just it's messed up man and like all the little crazy. male cows go to <laughs> eel farms and stuff like that. And it, it's just, <laughs> I want to keep this light and fun, but it's just, oh, I want you to make that connection eventually. It'll, it, yeah, it'll make it a little sure. easier. It'll be like, yeah, maybe I'll do four days vegan this week. <laughs> You're right. Know? Um, but yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a huge plus that you've done this, first of all. So <laughs> congratulations and thank you for taking the challenge. Hey man, thank you for thinking of me to do the challenge. Like I said, you know what I'm saying? Like I, just from having conversations with you about everything and made me want to do it. Yeah. I appreciate it. Thank you for the challenge. I think this is, this has been a great step. And if even you're doing more plant-based, I feel like I've succeeded, you know, already. Mm -hmm. um, and that you've, you've succeeded because you've seen the benefit of what it can do for your body. And that's, that's mm -hmm. a big, that's a big part of it. Like if mm -hmm. my mother and father who have inflammation would just, you know, integrate more plant-based foods into their diet, they, I think they would see a big change. Wonders. Or right. it's more about actually eliminating the meat and dairy because like you can keep adding plants to it, but once you start cutting things out, then they'll see improvement. And a lot of people don't really feel like, oh, I'm gonna eat a burger and then a salad. And it's like, okay, it's the burger. It's the stuff in the burger that's causing you the inflammation, not- Exactly. Yeah, so just eat the salad. <laughs> I hope everyone got some value out of this chat with Brandon. I know I got value out of it. I know Brandon, you got value out of it. So absolutely 100%. I hope this can help other people that might have inflammation problems, might be like on the fence about veganism. You want to talk about your social media real quick? Yeah, you can find me on Twitter at Chris St. DTA. You can find my podcast, me and my uh, best friend, Aaron. We do a true crime podcast, kind of been on hiatus for a little bit. It's called Into the Deep. The social media for that is at Into the Deep Pod on Twitter. So while you're eating your salads and like plant-based burgers and stuff, work on Into the Deep. 
and uh, yeah, link those two together. Yep. Be like, oh yeah, well I gotta go do some into the deep, and I'm gonna eat. So <laughs> time for me to eat a salad. <laughs> Dude, I'm, I'm telling you now, like at the stage I'm at, I love salads. Like I eat salads a lot. Dude, I'm all, I always have like salad, so. Yeah. I don't know, there's something to it. <laughs> no. Nope. By the way, thanks for uh, joining me, Brandon, and uh, I'll catch Thank you later. Thank you, dude. Yeah, and uh, everybody keep supporting Ryan and Alternative Reality. He's not going to let you down. Always informative, always helpful. Uh, and Ryan, you just keep doing your thing, dude. Thank you so much. I mean, I might let you down every once in a while, but yeah, I'm trying not to. No, never. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Peace out. All right, buddy. Later. If you want to have some success like Brandon and you're interested in this, go to challenge22.com. Sign up today. There are mentors there. There are doctors there. It's a huge support group there. Plus all the support that I added in the description of this video. There's really no reason to not try veganism for 22 days it takes 21 days to form a habit 22 days maybe the habit will stick you know i mean it's worth a shot my goal with alternative reality is to show a million people the power of plant-based eating and get people to try to adjust their eating habits to eat less meat and less dairy and eat more vegetables eat more fruits you're going to be healthier the earth is going to be healthier the animals are going to live if you want to help support this channel so we can reach a million people, consider buying me a coffee. I might buy coffee with it and drink it so I have more energy in these videos. I might like get better lighting, a computer that can actually render these videos. If you want to buy me a coffee, go to buymeacoffee.com slash alternative R and you can throw me like three bucks and it's like a one-time transaction. Until next time, keep it green and I'll see you in the next video. I should have some sort of joke, but I don't have any jokes. You always have jokes, so that's kind of weird. Right? I need a hook. I need a hook for this video.